Okay. There we are. Good to see you guys. Gonna give you guys just a minute to come find us. Gonna be a good night together. Just give it oh, just a minute for everybody else to just kind of jump on. Super excited for what God has planned for us tonight. Okay. Well, I'm just going to start because we have an awful lot of stuff to get through tonight. So, yep, there you guys are jumping in the comments saying hi. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so we have a lot to cover tonight. So I'm just going to dive in. I'm just going to go ahead and start. Um, welcome. So glad to see you guys. Um, this is a topic that is obviously very dear to our hearts. We're talking about our babies. We're talking about how it's impacting our homes. And so... Fasten your seatbelt because we have a lot. What I didn't want to do is I did not want to turn it into a three-week teaching or uh, ministry time. And so we're just going to kind of get in there, do a powerful punch tonight. And I'm just going to trust that the Holy Spirit's going to do what he needs to do with it. Before I start, I just want to say we have launched our Apostolic Hub. And for those of you that do not understand what that is, an Apostolic Hub is very equivalent to an airplane hangar where the airplane comes in. And guess what they need? They refuel, they recharge, they restock, and then they go right back up into the air and they carry on where, wherever it is that they're, um, where they're going, their destination. So we have designed something very similar to that for parents. This isn't a church. This isn't a landing place. This isn't a, like, come here and, and sit here for a long time. It's come to the Apostolic Hub. It's called Ascend, of course, let the children fly. Ascend, a come, get the tools that you need. We have thousands of pieces of um, information, tools, encounters, questions, how to do this, how to teach children, how to hear, what about children in the church? I mean, it, it hurts, lies, and offends us. I mean, you name it. If it affects the family, it's probably on there. We have thousands of different things for you guys. You come in, you get what you need, you get the tools, you go back out to your families, and you come back as much as you need. So, my, um, the membership, the members of Ascend are, um, sharing me with you guys tonight because normally I do these teachings with the Ascend members but tonight we decided to do it on a Facebook Live because this issue affects so many different people. So um, uh, with Ascend what we do is we have one to three live teachings like this a month where we are going after the issues that affect parents. So really want to encourage you guys to come and be a part of that. Um, if you sign up a website, if you use the coupon code Ascend you can get the level two, which just means you get more goodies, but the level two for the level one price. And so that's good for the end of the month. But um, anyways, come see us there. So again, we have lots to cover tonight. So let's just go ahead and dive in. Raise your hand if you are dealing with chaos in your home regarding screens. Raise your hand if you are dealing with broken connection. If you're dealing with violence, rebellion, anger, rage, with the meltdowns, everything that I put in the post. Raise your hand if that's the kind of stuff you're dealing with. If you are, then you're a good company tonight. But this is exactly what we're gonna go after. And so, I just wanna say this. I have a couple things to say before we get started. I just wanna say, I am not your child's parent. I do not know what's best for your child. You do. That you will give an account for your child someday. I will not. And so, part of what we're gonna go after tonight, it's your job to take it and to, t to marry it with the Holy Spirit and to, and to partner with your child's creator to see what is appropriate for your child, what is appropriate for your family. This isn't what Lisa Max said. This is Lisa Max is sharing now what is the Holy Spirit saying. And so I really want to encourage you with that. Um, I don't believe that this message tonight is necessarily for all children, but if you raised your hand about the chaos, the war, the, the conflict, the violence, the whatever around screens, this message is absolutely for you. So, okay, I'm going to ask for a little bit of apostolic grace, and simply what that means is apostolic people care very much so about being in alignment. We see things that are out of alignment, we're not justice people, we're alignment people, and this is an area that is so out of alignment for families that um, I burn with this message. I've been sitting on this. In fact, I can tell you this. 
um, this afternoon, it's like God just fell. Um, I, it's like he just gave me his heart for this message. And I literally was wiping away tears just a couple of minutes ago. I so feel the Father's heart for this message for your family. So I'm going to operate in the apostolic anointing, which means I'm going to say hard things. I'm going to, I'm going to say them. It, 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 it's going to feel um, uh, real blunt for some of you. And that's, again, where you just have to take it like a son and daughter and take it before the Lord. But I, I'm going to speak boldly tonight because I feel like even as I said in the post, I'm going to sound the alarm. I'm going to sound the alarm for your families. Blow a big whistle in your families tonight. Okay? Screams is a very big word. Okay? If we were to trans or to, to plug in a different word and say um, teaching children about sex, okay? So there's sex education, there's sexual safety, there's about pornography, there's like predator stuff, there's like identity stuff, like underneath the umbrella of sex, there's a lot of different sub subjects that we could talk about, right? So I feel like the same is about screens. There's we're gonna talk about the screens and like how much should should they be on the screens? Or, or you could talk about like how to keep them safe from online predators, or how do you keep them from dabbling into the wrong stuff, or whatever. So we're not going to talk about any of that because I think um, and believe that there's so many really good resources out there, and that you can get so much so much of that already. Okay, I, I really feel like there's a lot of that, and if you want it, it's out there. I'm not going to talk about that. We are going to go much much deeper. Okay, and can we just say this, the chaos in your home, the chaos, the war, the disconnection, the violence, all that kind of stuff, can we just say that limiting screen time probably isn't touching it? Can we just say that putting an app or a block probably isn't touching it? We actually, many of you have escalated to the point where children are waking up in the middle of the night and sneaking some of it, or they've just learned to maneuver around some of that. And so um, we're not trying to control things here we're, with what I'm talking about tonight. We're here to set children free. And so, um, again, if you need the tools for all of that kind of stuff, I'm sorry you're not going to get a lot of that tonight, but you are going to get something more. Um, okay. At the end of this message, at the end of this message, I want you to have righteous anger. That's actually my goal. <laughs> I want to stir up, not anger, I want to stir up righteous anger. I want you to have so much righteous anger because you are going to be so full of revelation with what I'm going to share that I hope that the revela that the, um, the righteous anger leads you into a godly repentance. And repentance means to turn and that you would turn and then in that place take action. So I'm just telling you, um, I'm, I'm cheating a little bit here by telling you what I hope um, it happens by the end. I want you in righteous anger. I want you in righteous anger, and I think that's part of just even the tears um, of just really feeling the Father's heart for this. So um, I'm going to warn you, though, that revela with revelation comes responsibility. When you have eyes to see or the scales have been lifted off of your eyes, now you now have a responsibility to it. Where there's responsibility comes accountability. And I'm going to say this, that, that obedience is going to cost you something. There's something about this message tonight. It's actually going to cost you something. And um, come on, is it, isn't that the way of the Lord? Isn't that the, the righteous way? Is that it cost us something? Isn't it that the, the things that are most valuable to the kingdom actually have a price tag? You know, come on, we don't earn it, but it, but it will cost you something um, deep inside of you. And so um, I'm, just, I'm just calling it like it is. It's going to cost you something tonight. Okay, so if you've been with me for a long time or for any amount of time, you know I don't just like talking and teaching what is the point about talking about Jesus and why don't we just go ahead and experience him? And I just love that we can just go and do this in the beginning part of the message. You don't need me to stir up a message and then we'll go into ministry time. Let's just go into ministry time right now. Okay? All right. So I want you to put your hand on your heart. I want your hand on your heart. Mm -hmm. And I have a question for you. Do you want his truth at all cost do you want his truth at all cost and i just want you to declare that out loud everybody's in the privacy of your own homes i just want you to declare that out loud lord i want your truth at all cost whatever your truth is i want to be in alignment with that just declare it out loud just be telling him right now that that is what you want thank you jesus thank you jesus we want your truth at all costs. 
Let me just pray for you. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you would come and you would remove everything that stands in the way of your truth for our children. That you would remove, that you would take down, that you would dismantle anything that has been put up that, are, that blocks or avoids your truth in our homes. You've got to start here. Put your hand up again. If you can identify that you have, have fear over this child. That you have fear over this child. How many of you can put up your hand and say, I am so done with the chaos that I actually have started to shrink back. I haven't been able to say what I want to say because I don't like the I don't like the conflict. I don't I don't like the pushback. I don't like the fighting. I give in a lot because it's just not worth the battle. Sometimes I feel like I give the screen time just to pacify that child. It's kind of just, you know, plug in a pacifier because I just don't want to go another round. How many of you can say that? How many of you have felt so unbelievably controlled by this thing? You have felt like this the issue of screens has controlled you. How many of you hate the chaos so bad? How many of you think about it every single day? That there's not a day that goes by that you are not entangled or, or dealing with the chaos on some level? Raise your hand. There you go. If you have answered yes to any of that, then you probably have partnered with a spirit of fear over this. And we've got to start here, guys. We've got to start and remove the fear because the fear will influence you in being able to move into where you need to be to help your child. And so if you, if you have partnered with that, you don't, I'm just going to lead you in a prayer and we're going to kind of go through this a little bit fast. It's, it's kind of weird to do this on Facebook Live. I don't see everybody and whatever, but I just want you just to kind of be in yes and agreement with me as I pray for you. You maybe just even repeat after me and say it out loud. So Jesus, I come before you. And I acknowledge that I've partnered with fear over this child. Thank you, Jesus, that you see me, that you know me, that you know how hard this is, how tiring and exhausting this is, how frustrating this is. Thank you that you see the whole story. Thank you that you have not left me, that you are with me. But I still confess that fear cannot be in my parenting to a belt. That fear has no room for parenting children ever, especially today. And so I confess that I've partnered with it and I ask for your forgiveness. Jesus, do you forgive me for shrinking back and partnering with fear over my child? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say this as somebody that deals with parents every day, all day long. Some of you need deliverance from fear. Some of you need actual deliverance. You need to be delivered from a spirit of fear. You need to be delivered from that. Get the help that you need to resolve the fear. Okay. All right. I just saw somebody talking about, are you guys okay for the, can you guys not hear this? Is it going in and out? Give me some chats here about the, about the sound. Looks like it's okay. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. Put some messages in the message if I need to change something about the, the sound. Okay, so we, all of us, doesn't matter how old your babies are, but we are pioneers in technology with children. So in my generation, when I was a child, nobody had a phone. No, and we had a play phone. No, nobody had a phone. So we are the first generation of raising children with screens. Okay, but we're not at the beginning of that. This isn't like, oh, these phone things and it's brand new. Every home has a phone now. Third world countries all have phones. Okay, so we are not, we are no longer pioneering and forging and, 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 and paving that path. We now are in a season where we need to evaluate. We need to evaluate. We have enough history behind us with children and phones. We have enough evidence in our own homes that we need to um, we need to move into no longer pioneering with them, but evaluate them. We are no longer keeping up with the Joneses with our children and screens, and we need to start keeping up with Jesus, 
with the screams in our in our children. Uh, I said phones, but I meant our children. Um, but it's time to stop aligning with the Joneses and start aligning with Jesus. Okay? So I asked many of you guys to grab a piece of paper and a pen. So hopefully you have that. But I have a question for you. I have a couple questions for you. The first one is, why did you allow screens? Now, I'm not talking about like the tablet for school because they were online and they, that's the only way they could get an education. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking the games, the apps, the snapshot, the, the, um, the, the different games that they have, the Candy Crush. I'm talking about all that kind of stuff. Why did you first say yes? My child can have that. Chances are you're the one that bought it. You're the one that said yes. You're the one that helped them download it. You're the one that, come on, you're the gatekeeper of the home. And so I'm just asking, there's no condemnation. I'm just asking for you to get a little bit of self-reflection. Why did you say yes? Why, why did you say yes to that? Everybody has their own answer. I'm just going to say mine really quick. I didn't like them. I probably wouldn't have done it. I'm just not a big technology, selfie, gaming kind of person anyways. Um, I didn't like it. Um, it was actually given to my child, and I didn't want to be the, the mean mom. I, di I didn't want to be the uncool mom. I didn't want to be the mom that, like, denied my, ch my child that stuff. That's exactly why I said yes in the beginning. I was like, well, everybody's doing it. We'll see what it looks like, and I, I didn't put my foot down. I felt it, but I didn't put my foot down. Okay? So I want you to be in touch with that. Why did you say yes? Okay? Second question is, who is benefiting from the screens? So if it's bringing in so much chaos, who's benefiting? So, so what's the benefit? What's, what's the payoff? Come on, let's, let's just go there for a second. I really want you to think. Who, who's benefiting here? Are you benefiting because you get a break? Is your child benefiting? How are they benefiting? What, what, what's the benefit? You know, nobody really likes to do homework. At least a lot of people don't like to do homework. But um, we do homework because it's a necessary thing in order to get an education. We don't always like chores, but we do it. I've got some kids that absolutely hate brushing their teeth, but we do it anyways, right? So what's the what's the benefit to bringing these these um, the screens into your home? Write it down. I think it's really important, moms and dads, that you are writing down what you are getting out of it. You can say I don't like the chaos, but I, but I actually think you're still getting something out of it. Write it down. Just get in touch with it. Okay. Maybe it's because you want a break. Maybe because you're just like, it's just better off. I'm, I'm just better off not dealing with you right now. And the chaos and the fighting, I just, I just kind of want to just chill out. I just want a break. I don't think parents taking a break is a bad thing. But the question is, we have to keep pulling on the rope and asking questions. You want a break from what? Do you just need a break because you're working really hard and you just everybody just needs a little bit of rest within that? Or are you having a break because your child has such ill character and your child is so out of control and you just don't want to deal with it? You'd rather just put your head in the sand and you'd rather just have them go be, be with the screens. The question you really have to, to answer and dig deep with the Holy Spirit. If you don't know, ask Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you show me. Um, 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 what am I taking a break from? Right? Okay. Maybe you said it's to, it's for joy. Well, it just brings my child so much joy. It just brings them so much joy. That's why I do it. I definitely fell into that. Um, my son loves them. And it just brings him so much joy. Well, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something really hard. I'm going to say something really hard. Porn brings joy. Pornography brings a certain level of joy. It's not righteous joy. It's not the joy we're supposed to be having. But what makes you feel good is not a very good grid for righteousness. But let's just admit it. Let's just start there with the truth. Um, is, is, is it the joy? Is that why you keep putting up with the chaos? Is because it brings your child some joy. Okay. Um, I find it interesting as I've been pressing into the subject with parents for a while now. I find it really interesting that the ease generally are the children that bring a lot of chaos. There's a lot of swirl around that. And um, then when they're behaving really well and we've had good days or they've listened really well, what do we reward them with? We will reward them with more screen time. And so I just have a question with that. So if you're rewarding them with a the screen time because it brings them so much joy, then what's the fruit of that? Is the fruit of that more chaos? 
I'm going to say for many of you, I know the answer is yes. So I'm just trying to break it down here, you guys, so you guys can see some of this. Okay. How many of you have had family vacations? You've had airplane rides. You have had long trips. You have had camping trips. You have had Christmas break. You've had summer vacation. You've, you've had all that stuff because you're good moms and dads and you love to bring the joy into, into your home and make family memories. How many of you have had those things attacked by that child? You're just like chaos, you know, it comes out, connection goes out the window. Why? Because they're feasting on the tablets and on the games and on the screens more on the planes and the car ride, whatever. They're feeding on it and you're getting the fruit of it. You know, so many times parents are like, I don't know what their problem is. Why did they have to ruin that trip? Hmm, maybe because they sat on their screen longer and for a whole long time. Anyways, I'm just exposing it, you guys. Okay. Um, I'm just going to skip through some of this, you guys. Again, just hear my heart. I really didn't want to turn this into a three-week teaching, although it really should have been more like a six-week teaching. But we're moving into Christmas, and I really want to get this before Christmas break. I really want to get this message out before um, Christmas presents are coming. You know, let you figure out what I mean by that. Um, and so I'm, I'm doing this kind of rapid fire. I'm doing this really fast. I'm just going to trust that the Holy Spirit's going to break down whatever it is that you need to see and hear. Um, but so I'm going to skip through it kind of fast, but, um, COVID, we all just came off of that season of the, of the world being shut down. I don't need to unpack that for you, but what's happened is because the children too went in a, in a major timeout and they lost that sense of connection and belonging with their peers. They missed out on developmental, on, on the developmental, the social stuff, on the conflict resolution, on, um, uh, uh, just the peers and come on peers and all of that matter to a child's development you have ninth graders that are actually more socially like seventh graders and who is seeing this more than anybody the the teachers the teachers are just absolutely like oh my word we have these you know seniors in these senior bodies and yet they're acting like they are freshmen there's just there's not that de de developmental um milestones, if so to speak, because we're still feeling, the children are feeling the aftermath of that, okay? And so what does that mean? It means the children need more of you. They need more of that tangible hands-on connection, not the screen time. What did they get? They got more screen time and less of that connection. Their social and emotional skills have absolutely taken a hit. Ask your, teach, ask your children's teachers. Ask them. Just just ask them. You, you will hear the feedback of that. But okay. Um, I wonder if part of this has created the deficit with character and children because we're treating them as if they're older than maybe developmentally, kind of really where they truly are at. And it's causing so much frustration for parents. And that's part of that. Just go do the screen when in fact they actually need to be parented more. They need more help. They need more um, more development there. Okay, I'm just going to say this really quick. When we have a need in our home, our children need something of us, and we are overwhelmed, we're frustrated, we're, we're feeling like we're not sure what to do, whatever comes with all of that. And we shrink back from our authority, we are actually opening up our children to the wrong authority. To the wrong authority. And if you stay with me until the end of this, teaching, you will see exactly what kind of authority has actually stepped in as parents have laid down some of that authority. Um, yeah, they need more of you, not less. Okay, I'm just going to talk really quick about, about joy. Joy is essential. It's absolutely essential. We need joy to be able to... Joy gives a chemical in our brain that allows us to... Um, uh, gives us the will to fight and to endure hard things. So there's a whole bunch of science behind that, whatever. So we need joy in order to survive life. If there's hard things in life, which we all have that right now, or we've had it the last couple of years, then that means we need more joy. We need more of that chemical, right? And so what is, how does the joy come? It comes through the interaction, the laughter, the joy, the throwing the ball, the tickling, the eye contact, the I see you, the talking, the engagement, all of that kind of stuff is what helps bring that joy and increase that chemical in their brain. The, there's other things that bring joy. So we have things like gaming, we have pornography, we have shopping, we have the social media of the wrong way. 
We have all of these other things that bring that same chemical in our brain, but we're doing it as orphans. We're not doing it as sons and daughters. Let me say it this way. We can get joy or we can create something in our homes for our children that bring the joy, but the joy is as an orphan and it comes with a price tag, a price tag of shame, a price tag of disconnection, a price tag of hurting their brains and their minds. Or we can have joy as a son and a daughter. Um, joy is essential. How we are getting it is the million dollar question. Is the million dollar question. I'm going to be a little bit all over the page. And if you just bear with me, but I promise I'm going to land the plane at the end and it's going to make more sense. But right now I just, I feel like I kind of have to do some popcorn things here. And I'm just going to keep doing that. Um, this is what I hear all the time from Christian parents. Is, oh, but Lisa, we don't we don't do the violent games. We just we we just do not do the violent games. Um, what we have is we have like the good Christian games. I'm like, hmm, okay. Well, um, I I think there's some deception in that. I just I just do. I think there's some deception in that. My daughter, um, she uh, many many years ago, asked me if she could get an app that would track her little um, monthly flow stuff. And I was like, well, tell me about it. And it was like the first time we started dabbling into the world of apps. And I, I was like, oh, I don't know. And she kept asking and she kept asking. And I said, well, tell me some more about it and blah, blah, blah. And oh, no, mom, it's just like this like calendar thing that you do and making sure you're drinking enough water and exercise and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, okay. I, I, I kind of had to check in my spirit, but come on, we're pioneering with this stuff, right? There's no manual. There's no people before us. There's no fruit of other generations to evaluate. We're just, we're kind of on our own, just making it up as we go, right? And so it kind of had a little bit of a check, but I said, yeah, she could have it, seemed harmless, whatever. And all of a sudden, something just wasn't right in my home. I don't know how to explain it. I, 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 I discern, um, I'm sorry, I, I feel atmospheres. Um, I, I can feel like the wrong kingdom, like uh, the demonic stuff. I just, I can just tell when it's around, like there was just something that was not right. And it went on for weeks. I couldn't put my finger on it. And all of a sudden we noticed that in our, the front of our house, there was like a bunch of like, um, uh, like half empty, like beer cans, like, like people were sitting on our curb, like having like a little bit of a party, a lot of cigarettes and all that kind of stuff. And it happened to be right outside my daughter's window. And, um, it wasn't just one night. So it was like multiple nights. And I was like, why, why we kind of lived on a little bit of a busy street and a lot of street lights. Like, why are they right there? And why right in front of my daughter's window? And then one day it ex escalated and I could tell that there was footprints by my daughter's window outside. Come on, you guys, this is alarming. Uh, noticed that there was some activity in our backyard too. And I was like, all right, this is not cool. And I went to the police and they're like, you know, get cameras, get motion lights. And I was like, no, there's, yes, but there's just something, something's not right. And I kept going after, I knew it was with this particular daughter and it, it, I just, I could not get to the bottom of it. Never thinking it had anything to do with her little monthly app, you know? And um, I would ask her, and she's like, no, everything's fine. And one night I went to bed, and I just thought, I am not going through this another day. My spirit is so on fire that something is not right. And I literally, I got her out of bed, and I, I was like, Mama Bear. And come on, sometimes moms and moms and dads, when we are dealing with a spirit thing, we, we need to be like all in. We need to be all in. And um, I called a family meeting and woke them all up. And I said, I have no idea what this is, but we are not going to bed until this thing is revealed, it's discerned, and it is dealt with. Again, not having any correlation with the stuff that I was seeing outside with what I was feeling. And or no, just I didn't put the puzzle pieces together. And all of a sudden, she broke down. And she said, um, you remember that app? And I'm like, yeah. And she said, um, well, I know I'm not allowed to do chats and I know I'm not allowed to like give out address and all that kind of stuff. She goes, but mom, she goes, there was just like these girls that started friending me on this app and um, they just were asking really like just basic questions. And I said, well, what kind of questions were they asking? And okay, let me just tell you, I'm smart enough as an adult woman to know she was not talking to other peer girls asking these kind of questions. There was some, there was ill intent with some of these questions. No other peer is going to want to ask those types of questions. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, what do you mean? And so she started explaining a little bit more. Come to find out she'd been doing this online chat with stuff. She thought it was a little girl. It wasn't. It clearly wasn't. Now, she was 
mortified when I told her the truth of what she was probably who she was probably was talking to. I looked at all the stuff. I was mortified, cleaned it up, deleted the app, whatever. This is what I want to uh, what I want you to know. How innocent is that? Tracking, you know, your period. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's 50% of the population. Because there's the spirit behind most of this stuff that is not so innocent. And so do I think that whoever she was talking to online, that they were the people outside my window? I actually don't. I, I don't. What I believe, though, is because she went out from underneath my covering, number one. Number two, I was oblivious to some of the stuff. And what happened is she opened up the door to some of the stuff. And when you open up the door in the, in the kingdom, and with the wrong kingdom, it's, it's, it's like a magnet out there. Like you're saying, I want this. It's like opening up the front door. That stuff will come. So instead of having the covering and the protection, there's actually an open door with that. And so as soon as we dealt with it, renounced it, repented, and, and prayed, and covered, and all that kind of stuff, I had a complete peace that my house and my children were safe again. So don't tell me this stuff is innocent. Do not tell me this stuff is innocent. There was another app. You guys know all this already? Come on, because this isn't our first rodeo, right? Um, there was another app that my daughter wanted. She was like in the fourth grade. I don't know. She was like fourth or fifth grade. I don't remember. And um, it was like paper dolls. Like who didn't like paper dolls, you know, as a kid? Like you have this little doll and whatever, and then you get to dress her, her, her clothes and her shoes and her hair and whatever until she did it like 40 times. And then all of a sudden when you get into the 40th thing, so now I'm not watching it anymore. I'm not paying attention. I'm not involved because it's good, right? All of a sudden it's like, well, you dressed her. Like, does she want to go out with her friends? Does she want to go to the mall? Does she want to go on a date? And if you pick the date app, it goes to full-blown having sex with which boyfriend and what sexual acts do you want to do? So it starts out here and it ends over here. But the thing is, is that even though we don't know where it's going to end, we're still partnering with some of that stuff, right? When we partner with it, we're opening up the door. I'm sure many of you guys have your own testimonies of this stuff. Um, another quick thing, um, Hudson, um, you know, he's in that good games. You know, there were clean games. They were the Christian ones, whatever. And um, we were walking around Walmart one day. And um, I asked him to stand by the cart and guard my purse while I went to go do something. And then something with Ellie. And he was like getting in a fight with everybody. And he was just being snarky with people. And I was like, what? What is this? Like my son just, I have a higher expectation than my son treating people this way. And he's been trained that way. Like what? what's going on? And I realized he's sitting there on his phone like this. And everybody is like in my way. Get out of my way. It's like me, myself, and I. And I just remember this righteous thing came over me and I told him, we got back in the car and I said, new boundary, you are never allowed to have your phone and be like that when we are in the presence of other people like that. To be so selfish, to be so self-centered, to be mean to strangers when we're supposed to be the light and the life and all of that, no, in my home, not going to happen. But what, but what I'm saying is it turned, something went inward instead of being focused outward. This isn't in my notes, but I'm going to put in a really quick plug for this. I don't think that apps, screens, games, all that kind of stuff should be in the church at all. I don't think it's, it, it should be entertaining children in church at all. Yes, they're quiet. Remember what I said? What is the payoff, right? What are you getting out of this by, by um, partnering with this? Um, the payoff is they're quiet. They're entertained. They're not being... Um, disruptive they're not whatever but they're missing out on the Holy Spirit they're missing out on what's going on in the room they're missing out on receiving they're missing out on learning they're missing out on learning how to worship they're missing out on all that and I just remember from the get-go I was like my children are not going to associate go to church with games that church and games like they're just we go to church for Jesus because he's worthy of worshiping not gaming and not only that, half the games that are being played in the church are murder, death, blood. Like, that's not why we go to church. Amen, please. Anybody? Somebody? Okay. We are mind, body, and spirit. We are mind, body, and spirit. And so I'm going to focus for the rest of this time on completely the spirit realm with apps. Um, just give me a quick chat um, in the comments. Are we doing good? Are you guys okay? You guys doing okay here? Yeah, it looks like a lot of people can still hear me, so we're good. I'm just going to keep going on. So, okay. All right. Um, 
trust me, you guys, if you stay with me until the end, you're going to see something that I don't think you've seen before with this. Okay? So, some of your children, and I can say this because I've worked with scores of parents in this area, some of your children are addicted. There's an actual addiction to the stuff. It's not just that they want it like they want the cookie before dinner. It's not just that they have like no self-control. They are legitimately addicted to the screens and to the apps. And that's what I want to break down for a second. What does the Bible say about, uh, first of all, what is game? What is gambling? We're just going to start with gambling. Just bear with me for a little bit on my rabbit trail. What is gambling? Gambling is you take a risky action in the hopes of a desired result. Okay, so you're, you're risking. You never know when you do this or that what the outcome is going to be. And this applies to a game with candy, or this applies all the way to the casinos when you're risking. You're putting something out there in the hopes of a desirable outcome, but you, don't, you have no guarantee of it, right? So what happens to the brain when you gamble? Um, um, you already know this. It releases a chemical in the brain that gives you a shot of a high. There's, there's, there's like a, it's like a joy chemical, right? And so every time you gamble and you have a near, and you win, you get a high. Every time there's a near miss, there's something that happens in the brain that is like, go for the gold. Go, go, you, it's like you want, that, you, you want that fix of that high. So the near misses are the wooing and the wowing. How many times have you played the candy game or anything else and it's the near misses that make you go one more time, one more time, one more time because you're building that up ready for the fix. You're ready for that. You guys know a lot of this already so I'm, so I'm not going to totally unpack the science behind it. But anyways, so it releases the chemical that makes you feel good, okay? We need, we need that chemical. We need that, we need that in our brains. But we don't want to be getting it from a superficial source. Right? We do not want to be getting it from a super, super superficial source. So what does the Bible say about gambling? First Timothy 1.9 says, But those who desire to be rich fall into, into temptation, into a snare. It's senseless and harmless desires, I'm sorry, harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For their love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It is um, through this craving, this desire, that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. I dare say, many of you are already seeing some of this in your homes. You're already seeing some of this in, in your homes. So then it, it, it beckons this next question. But Lisa, gaming is not gambling. I disagree with that. I disagree with that. Because the people that created the gaming, the, um, the, um, the, the different games, they um, uh, modeled it, that's the word I'm looking for, they modeled it after the casinos. They, after, they modeled it after the same psychology in Vegas, in Reno, where people throw away so much money. They throw it away. Why? Because that little joy drug is getting higher and higher and higher and higher. When that is high, what goes out the window is reasoning, is critical thinking. So this is lopsided. This is high and this is low. And that's why they can do whatever they want to do in Sin City. And um, what happens in the city stays in the city, right? Because it's out of bounds right there. Um, but I disagree. I think that the gaming that we are putting our children in front of has the same psychological effect on their brain as putting them in front of a, um, a slot machine. Would you do that? Would you put your two-year-old in front of a slot machine and say, oh, it's okay, it's just fun. It's just innocent. It's just a couple of pennies. That's okay. Why? You would never do that. <laughs> because you have an awareness that gambling is wrong. It's not, it's not the slot machine that's wrong. It's the dynamics of the slot machine and what happens to us as humans that's wrong, right? Um... Uh, people will say, well, we limit the time. We, li we limit the time, right? But Lisa, we just do a little bit. We just do like 10 minutes, twice a day. It's okay. Um, would you pop your child in front of something that has an addictive um, attachment to it? Would you, would you plop them in front of it for just a couple of minutes and, and call it innocent? I don't know. I think we need to be looking at this a little bit different. Um, 
Would you do it if there was an activity that was going to harm them down the road? That was going to alter something in their brain? You guys, we're not talking about gaming 10 years ago. We're not talking about 15 years ago. We're talking in the year 2022, almost 23, after the two, last two and a half, three years that we've just walked through. We, um, you got to put it in the context of, of the, um, uh, the era that we live in. Uh, but Lisa, um, we're Christians and we just allow healthy games. I hear this all the time. Healthy games. Uh, we don't we don't do any violence. Um, again, the same psychology behind that um, behind the gaming is behind the the gambling. Um, but Lisa, we um, we just play in moderation. We just, we just do a little bit. And so I say, okay, well, how about a little bit of dog poop and the brownies? D don't tell me that a little bit doesn't ruin the whole batch. Don't tell me that a little bit. How much a little bit chaos do you want? How much a little bit violence do you want? How much a little bit of a meltdown do you want? If there's a root and there's something behind it that is that is going haywire in the child's brain, why would you want that? Why would you want that? Um, oh, but Lisa, um, my child loves the game. They just love it. It brings my child so much joy, and I wouldn't want to take away their joy. That was me for a while. Um, and I, I, I'm just going to call it like it is. I think you're deceived. I, I think there's some deception here. So, like I said earlier, porn brings joy. That joy, um, whatever makes you feel good, is not a good grid for what is righteous and what is holy. We have to look a little bit deeper. Um, if you've got the chaos, you've got to look at the root. That you've got to look at the not just the fruit, but you have to look at the root. Um, um, uh, are, Lisa, are you saying that we should get rid of all gaming in our house? I'm saying. If your child is addicted to alcohol, how much alcohol are you going to have around? If your um, loved one is addicted to pornography, how much are you going to have around? I'm saying that there is an attack on children's brains today. How much is too much? How much is just a little bit? I'm trying to sound the alarm and I'm trying to bring a wake-up call that we are playing with a fire, that we are seeing the fruit of our children getting burned. It goes back to my original questions. Who's profiting here? Is that child profiting because they're on fire? Because they're having meltdowns at the age of 10? Because they don't know how to be, treat their parents honorably and respectfully? Are they profiting by that? And are we profiting because we're feeding them that? It's between you and the creator. It's between you and your child's creator to press them and answer some of these questions. Um, um, okay, let, let, let me move on with us. 2 Timothy 3, I'm going to read this exactly as it says here. 2 Timothy says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the days ahead. People, and, and you guys, people can also mean children. People, children, will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, you know, prideful, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God and what's righteousness, having a form of godliness, but denying the power. Why bring them to church if we're not letting them actually engage with the power, with the glory, with the presence? They're in the house, but really are they in his presence? Um, then the Bible goes on to say, have nothing to do with these people. That, that's a really strong word in 2 Timothy 3. But we are in the era of parenting that. Of, of parenting that. I don't think God is saying have nothing to do with our children. I think there's a grooming spirit that is happening right now to groom children with a 2 Timothy 3 so that they end up off the path. And I just did this huge teaching on Ascend, our apostolic hub, um, just a week or so ago. Did two rounds of it about um, parenting chaos based on 2 Timothy 3. And let me tell you, when a mom and dad has eyes to see and revelation comes and they step back into their place of an alignment, I literally have parents messaging me every day with tears streaming down their face saying, I got my kid back. We have been battling this for years and I've got my kid back. My kid has come back to me because parents have walked into their authority. Um, okay, so in the last days, there's going to be an attack on minds. If you if you continue on with Second Timothy, it talks about it says they have um, a, a um, depraved deprived mind. If this is a mind attack, right? That can cause all of these the character things that I just list, listed. 
Um, it is an attack on our children's minds. So if we know that, if God is warning us in the word, then don't you think as parents we need to be gatekeepers of their mind? We need to be gatekeepers of what we're putting in. It is by the transforming and the renewing of the mind. So why are we polluting the mind with the stuff that we're putting in there? Um, just real quick, I just I want to uh, touch base on Exodus 23. Text about idols. God has serious things to say when we put other gods before him. And screens and tablets and games and all of that for some of your children has become an idol. It has become an absolute idol, and you are reaping the fruit of it. The Psalms, Isaiah, lots in the Bible, it talks about what happens when you have idol worship. When you have something that exalts itself in your love and your affection before God, what does it say? It says that you will become like them. You will become unseeing, unfeeling, unable to hear the truth. Um, uh, you become blind. Um, you become indifferent to the holy things. That's not what we want to be raising with our kids. That's not what we want to be going after. Um, for some of you, there are um, there's addiction in your bloodline. Addiction with gambling. It could be with alcohol. It could be with pornography, um, with drugs. There's, there's a bloodline um, spot that the enemy has been able to, to go after um, relatives in that area. So there's something in the bloodline. So why would we want to be handing our children something that has an addictive um, uh, nature to it. <sighs> Why would we want to hand our children over, hoping for the best, just so they can have some joy that actually is harming them long term? You guys, how many stories have you heard of kids that had so much going for them and they give up college or they, they blow their 20s or they, they give up good things or the path that God had for them for gaming. And they turn their life into no fruit, just sitting and addicted to that, to that chemical going off in their brain. You see this a lot. We actually see this a lot. Um, let's learn from them. Um, okay, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to go into the punchline here. Um, just keep giving me some comments, um, some um feedback in the comments so I know that you guys are with me and that we're doing good here. And it's so much different doing a Facebook Live than it is a Zoom call. But anyways, okay. So, a lot of demonic structures, um, um, they're like a scaffolding. So they have the main thing. So if the main thing here is like the addiction, the wooing and wowing to the, um, to the game so that it releases that brain, as I, I believe it's very orphan. But if that's the goal, get them addicted, and then they move into the Second Timothy 3 thing, um, increase the chaos that you're already experiencing. So if that's the goal, there's generally two, two things in operation in the demonic that props that up, right? It's just sometimes the way that the demonic structure works. And I believe after talking to scores and scores of parents and helping them through this, I believe that there's two pillars that prop up part of that, the feeding that addiction. One is the fear. Fear of man or fear of our children. Fear of missing out. Fear of not being the Joneses. Fear that my child's going to be different. Fear that um, I'm harming my child by not giving them what everybody else is doing. Some type of fear. So there's a fear. And then there's um, um, lack of authority. That the, the um, dynamics in the home with these children have caused parents, probably because of the fear, but, but to shrink back. And so they're not actually walking in their authority. And that is the scaffolding. Those are the two pillars that are holding up this addiction. Okay. We are mind, body, and spirit. You can have addiction in your mind, body, or spirit. Like it affects all of them, right? But I believe what we are talking about right now, I believe that this is part of the end times grooming of our children. I believe that this is a spirit of addiction that is attacking their brains. I believe it's the spirit that is being held up by the fear and the shrinking back from authority. So how do you topple it? How do you topple it? Moms and dads, you got to deal with the fear and you've, and you've got to, we got to die. We have got to absolutely die to the fear of everything and anything that stands in the way of being righteous and holy before God. Die to it. Work it out. Go get inner healing. Go get 
the body of Christ. Go talk to your pastor. Whatever you need to do, take our classes. I'm, uh, our class. I'm breaking up with fear. Get rid of that fear. You cannot take fear where we are going. Um, the second thing is you've got to be reestablished in your authority. You didn't lose it. You just laid it down. It's yours the moment you pick it back up. Um, but go after those two and watch some of that, that spirit of addiction get shifted. Okay. It's a lot. I know that it is. So just bear with me as I land this with this next big punch. Um, you guys doing okay? Doing good? Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Holy Spirit, <clears throat> this is your message. These are your people. These are your holy people. I ask Holy Spirit that you would come and open up their eyes, open up their ears, and bring this next part of this message into their hearts the way you want them to see this. <sighs> Come, Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm going to go through this fast. Revelation 2. Read it for yourself. Letter to the churches. Most of us know that. Jesus is talking. He's saying, attaboy, you did some great things here. This I'm, this I'm going to hold you accountable for. Revelations 2, he says, this I hold against you. One version says, this I rebuke you for. I rebuke you for this. Strong word. It says that you have held the, the doctrine of Balaam. Okay? So if you go then back to Numbers 22, 24, read it on your own. Um, I'm going to run you through the story um, of, of what happened here. Um, Balaam is the prophet. And um, he is the prophet of um, God's God's people. So then you have the king, and the king um, uh, feared God's people. So he didn't believe in their God, but he feared them because he saw God do, the God, do massive, amazing things, and he was very afraid of them as they were passing through his land. He felt very threatened. And so he actually was smart enough that if he's going to defeat this God, <laughs> great strategy, if you're going to defeat God, you don't go get the chariots. You don't go get all the other kings and uh, you know surrounding kings. You actually have to go to the highest spiritual person in the land and fight God like supernaturally. The king actually had the had the know uh, the bandwidth or the understanding of that. So he goes to the um, to Balaam to the prophet and he says, "Hey, I'm going to give you all of the stuff. I'm going to entice you with some goodies, and I want you to curse God's people." The prophet, being a prophet, says, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Let me go Let me go check in with the boss. So he goes before God and he says, hey, God, can I curse your people? And God's like, probably not a good idea. And so he goes back to the king and he's like, not able to do it. And so the king is like, no, I'm going to woo and wow you. I'm going to seduce you with even more things, with more money and, and I don't know what they did back then, cattle and, you know, all, all the stuff that they give. And so he calls the prophet back. And he says, okay, now I'm going to give you even more. I'm going to entice you to do this. Even like I'm, I'm going to appeal to you um, um, to um, seduce you. It, it says that he was relentless in going after him. Okay, so the prophet then goes back before God and he's like, hey, God, got to ask again. Do you think I could curse your people? This king is going to give me all this stuff. There's a payoff for me if I curse your people. And God's like, yeah, strict warning, don't do that. This is what I want you to see. The prophet obeys God, goes back to the, um, to the king, and he says, I'm not allowed to do it. But then he slips in this, and he says, but I will teach you how to teach the people how to curse themselves. So instead of me cursing them, I have the knowledge how to, how to get them to curse themselves. It's a scaffolding coming down like that. Anyways. Okay, so read, read that. Read Numbers 22 and Revelations 2, okay? So he taught them how to curse themselves. So um, what happened when they cursed themselves, they became defiled with many things. God says, don't do these things. I love you so much. You're my holy people. You're set apart. Don't bring this stuff in. But because they partnered with that and they began to curse themselves with the mixture, with bringing things in... Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Started bringing the um, them um, uh, the stuff in. They defiled themselves. Uh, idolatry, witchcraft. Hello, witchcraft. Mind, right? Um, but they they um, they were lured into that stuff. 
lured, wooed, groomed into that stuff that became, that was detestable to God, right? And these are such strong words, you guys, um, um, which was successful in pulling the Israelites and, and pulling God's people out of their holy alliance, out of what, 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 what they were called to do and how they were called to, to live, right? And so they were defiled. They they began to suffer. I think it was, I, I have it written down here, like 64,000, 24,000. Thousands and thousands and thousands of them died. There was great suffering. And in the suffering, then they began to repent and come back into an alignment. This is what I want you to see. I don't know if the end times is today, tomorrow, next year, next year you know, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, I don't know. I just know that we're closer to it today than we were last year. I know that we're closer and we're moving in that direction rather than going this way. That's all I know, okay? I am seeing over and over and over again how parents, oh, this is a hard thing to say, you guys, how parents are being used to actually be the ones to... To, to curse their ch children or to open up the door to their children, to defile their children, which only then creates something in the parents of getting more upset and exasperated. There's a lot of word cursing of parents then back to the children in their frustration and it creates the cycle. You guys, and man, this is hard stuff to say because I love you and because I know you love your children. It's hard stuff to say. But it is the truth that needs to be, it's the sound, um, the alarm that needs to be sounded. When we went through <clears throat> the Second Timothy 3 teaching, not that long ago with a bunch of parents. And we went after, break off the word curses off of your children. We are seeing instant turnaround in families. We are seeing instant. These are Jesus lover, God fearing, good mothers and fathers that have been seduced and lured into this. And they actually have been cursing their own children. And the moment they repent and they break that off, they are, they are sending me messages. They, they just come in by the bucketfuls. These messages of the suddenly, the sudden turnaround in their families. And I think this gaming thing is another way that the enemy has used parents to open up the door to bring a defiling into our children that is actually welcoming, welcoming a, a, an addictive spirit into our children. And then we reap the fruit of it as moms and dads. We get frustrated. And then what do we do in response with our children? And it creates the cycle. It creates the cycle. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus, for that. A few weeks ago, you guys, um, a 10-year-old in Michigan, 10, 10, shot and killed his mother because she didn't buy him a video game. It wasn't that she took it away and he was mad. She wouldn't buy him. That means they're at the store. It didn't happen. They got home and there was a crime scene. I don't know any much more about the story than that. I am not prophesying your child is going to do that. I'm saying we are dealing with an addictive um, spirit that is messing with our children's minds and the fruit of it is not life-giving. It is not life-giving. Are you allowing the payoff of screens to come in and actually curse and harm your child? Are you laying down your authority and allowing unclean things in your home? Are you allowing the spirit of addiction to come and wrap itself around your child's brain? Are you walking in compromise um, and supporting your child actually having an idol? Whew, this is hard stuff, you guys. Because of their defiance, they suffered, um, going back to the to the God's chosen people, they suffered, they repented, and they were restored. Moms and dads, you are in a fight. You are in a fight, and it's not going to let up. This is our new normal, and you are in a fight. Um, I have, over time, um, with, with my son, I've wanted to get rid of the games. I remember the first time he played it. And I could feel it. I could feel that it was a spirit, but I didn't have the language for it. And I talked myself out of it. But I could feel it the first time he was on it. We knew from early on he had to be very limited. Excuse me, because he would like act out some of the gaming stuff. Like he just got weird. His brain just got weird. And I just knew, like when he was at a, um, a play date or an overnight with a friend, um, I could tell, oh, you, you have played a lot of games. Like you have come back because we would reap the fruit of it for like two, three days. Um, 
But anyways, he's almost 18 now. And um, um, we had, we've been going through our own journey with a Second Timothy um, 3 passage, the teaching that we recently did. And I finally just said, enough is enough. I'm getting rid of it. And I got rid of all of it. Um, one day he was at school and it was hard. It was hard to cross over on that line because I, I was like, I don't want to hurt him. And I know that this is something that he enjoyed. And I was, but I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And got rid of it all in one day. And he came home, sat down and I said, son, I have something really hard to tell you. And I'm just going to give you some room to have some emotion and just not be, be really happy with me about it. But, um, but I sold everything and it's all gone and it's not at my home anymore. I just, there's no way I can allow this in anymore. And his response to me was, kind of wish you would have done that a long time ago. All this fighting about being on it, all this fighting and this chaos about it, and then I finally used my authority to get rid of it, and he's wishing I would have done it before. Come on, you guys, learn from that. Learn from that. Why? Because it's not an issue of, is the game fun? What they're saying is, I want help from the fruit and the aftermath and the torment and everything else that comes with it. It's the, it's the porn in the moment that has the price tag afterwards. We're not talking about, about how fun it is. We're talking about the, um, how much it affects them and torments them afterwards that they really want help with. Um, okay, we're getting down to the end here. Um, yeah, so I I, re I sold everything and I also returned a Christmas present that I, I bought him a new game and I was like, what am I doing? So uh, returned all of that. Um, a hundred percent of the parents, one hundred percent of the parents that have been walking this out with me uh, over the last couple of months, couple of weeks, a hundred percent have all said their kids are so much better when they finally drew the line. So I know that many of you have been like, well, I, yeah, I got convicted over the summer. We need to decrease. Yep, I, the Lord's been speaking to me. We like need to like shift this. But how much is still a little bit? How much is too much? And that's what you need to ask the curator about for your own kids. Okay, I think we're doing good. Um, kind of surprised I got through all that um, in just an hour. Um, I'm going to give you some ministry tools um, cause you gotta walk this out. You gotta be able to walk it out. I don't think this is a one and done. Um, all of your kids are in different places with this. Some kids are much more heavily, um, influenced. Some kids are going to bounce back. Some kids are going to give you some pushback. That, that breaking up with the fear of your child and walking in your authority. Um, some of your children are going to need deliverance from this, like, like legitimate deliverance from this. Um, some of your children are, are going to be, it's going to be like a sudden turnaround. Um, and just let it fall wherever it needs to fall. Just make sure that you're doing what you need to be doing um, to take authority over these spirits that are, um, um, that we've been exposing tonight. Okay, first um, Peter 5, 8, be sober, be alert, right? So we want to be awake. We don't, we don't want to be keeping up with the Joneses that we forget what Jesus is trying to tell us here. And we don't want to ignore the actual fruit. We want to close the doors. If there's addiction in your family, your bloodline at all, or your spouses, get those doors closed. So that there's no legal right of the enemy. Get them closed. Um, we want to deal with the addiction. So we want to um, cast down. We want to pull this thing down. We want to get it out. And we want to get it off. So we want to um, cast it down, out, and off. Cast down. That's what we're doing right now. We're exposing it. We're giving it truth, revelation. Blind eyes open, deaf ears open. You guys now have eyes to see and ears to hear. Um, parents, I think you need to repent. I think there needs to be some repentance. I thought I was being doing something good. I thought that I was being the kind mom. I thought it was innocent. I thought that it was just candy. I didn't realize all of the psychological stuff behind it. And I didn't realize what I actually was um, helping to defile my own child by saying yes to it. Um, repent if you feel led and, and you feel convicted of that. Um, you can't be perfect. Only Jesus is perfect. But you can absolutely be blameless. You are blameless every time you take something that's out of alignment into um, to the cross. You get to be blameless in that. Then the enemy doesn't get to use anything with that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Okay, out. Get the stuff out of the house. I, I, you guys, I, I can just hear it right now. Somebody is saying, Lisa's being a little radical. Lisa's like being a little extreme there. Really? For the chaos? 
for the violence, for the meltdowns, for the for the for the rage, for the the um the I hate you, the murderous words, for the stuff that some of you have been dealing in your house. This is not extreme. What's extreme is allowing it, hoping for different results. That's extreme. <laughs> um, remove it, unplug it, get rid of it, return your Christmas presents if need be. Um, sell it, say no more, draw a line in the sand, let them freak out. Guys, your kids freaked out when they were two and wanted a cookie before dinner. You could handle that. You, they're going to be okay. Walk in your authority. Delete the apps. I had a couple other kids that had um, an app, had game apps, whatever. They deleted them as well because, because we wanted to support the other family members that were struggling a little bit more with this. We're in this together as a family. We suffered together. We lived the fruit of it together. And we're going to walk in freedom together. So we all just deleted them. Um, and I can say, I'll say that at the end, um, off, get it off. Some of you are going to need deliverance. I would be commanding the spirit of addiction off my child's mind. I would be commanding it off of your homes and their rooms, whatever. Um, a spirit of violence and a spirit of murder. You guys, some of these games are murder. And so your child is getting that ping every time they kill. And even though it's a cartoon or it is a game, it's not real, they're still getting a ping for killing. <laughs> what do you think that opens them up to in the spirit realm? Some of the rage, the meltdowns, the violence. Well, let me say this. That child that that actually killed his mother, there's a spirit attached to that. That's not just, oh, his heart got so wounded. There's a spirit attached to that. Where did he learn that spirit? How was he introduced to that spirit? Break that off. Have you ever done that? Have you ever watched a show or a TV program or whatever and it was about violence or, you know, some little thing and all of a sudden just your house feels kind of blah? Well, that's what your child is bringing in when you're going on vacation or Christmas time or whatever. Cut it off. Get get those spirits out. Um, invite shalom. You invite shalom over their mind, over their connections. Um, stand your ground. Stand your ground. To the degree in which some of your children have partnered with us and some of you have allowed this is to the degree in which you're going to need to have resilience in standing your ground with us. For some of you, it's going to be super easy, a no, draw the line, fuss if you need to, we're done, and, you, and you're going to see instant shift in your kids. Some other kids, you're going to need to keep standing, the, um, holding on to the, um, holding your ground with it. Um, help them get out of the addiction but breaking out the spirit of addiction. And then you've got to fill it with good. You have to replace all that time and all that activity with something else. I think it looks like family. I think it looks like learning how to play cards. I think it looks like learning how to actually enjoy each other again. I think it looks like healing and mending those relationships where this gaming stuff has actually interrupted that and, and broken some of that. I think it looks like moms and dads getting off their phones and actually going back and being parents to spend quality time with their children. It's part of that cycle, these kids get crazy on some of their, their behavior, so the parents don't want to be around them so that everybody's going back into their phones into the app, which only makes it crazier. So it takes a while to re redo it the other way, okay? Um, if you are feeling like there is great need for additional deliverance, um, email me, reach out to me, um, you know, deliverance, this is what we do. We arrest the, the devil, we take authority over the devil, we get him out, we put him back in his proper place, and we put the Holy Ghost back in the proper place. Um, Jennifer Martin, I'm going to say her name again, Jennifer Martin is um, just the most beautiful sister. She has, um, there's a lot of deliverance ministries out there. But um, Jennifer is born for such a time as this, and the way, I'm going to cry, the way she ministers deliverance and love is like, not like anything I've ever seen before. Um, I, I've seen her in person, I've received ministry from her, um, I, I know her content pretty well, um, uh, she's a great one to connect with. Um, social media, she travels all over with an incredible team, and um, let me tell you, I mean, these 
<laughs> Follow Jennifer Martin. Go find her. All right. Lastly, I'm going to leave you with a Proverbs 27, 30, um, pro, uh, Proverbs 27, th uh, 12. Could not say that. Um, a wise man discerns danger and prepares himself. But the naive never looks ahead and suffers the consequence. Proverbs 27, 12. The world is in a hard place. And I don't know that it's, that it's going to get lighter. Do we want to set our children up for the future, full of addiction, full of idols, full of disconnection, full of guilt and shame? Or do we want to get off the path and do we want to help our children come back into an alignment in this area? I really encourage you to go back to the questions that I asked. Why are you doing this? Who's profiting? Partner with Holy Spirit. Have some conversations with him. Let him lead you. Let him show you what your children need. And I just want to just give you testimony. I have never enjoyed my son more than I have over the last month, six weeks, as we've been going after some of this and removing it. There is a sweetness of love in this house again. And I just want to release that over you, not to mention the other the scores of the other parents that are giving the same testimony. God's on your side. He's got your back. He's with you. I love you guys. I'm proud of you guys. I know you fiercely love your kids. And I just um, uh, I will be praying with you, praying for you in the hours and the days to come that you will steward this testimony well. All right. Be blessed, guys.